um, and Richie and things like that. Now, Richie famously didn't like the fact that Graham had short hair. Did Richie ever offer you any style advice or hair advice or fashion advice? He, he wanted me to wear white on stage. Okay. That's what he asked me to. That's what he asked me to do, and I said no. And he said, "Well, it'd be a good contrast between my black and your white. And your name's white, my name's Blackmore." And I was like, "Well, you know, the laundry bills will be massive, you know." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd look like an ice skater spinning around and jumping up and down on the stage. So I just said no, and he was like, "Okay then." So that was fine. Don't overdress. So I kind of underdressed a wee bit, you know, because he, you know, but he went out and just. I mean, he was brilliant to work with. He was brilliant to work with, you know. That I mean, obviously, he's famously a difficult character to work with. Sometimes, um, did you? Uh, come across any of that difficulty or is he just um, a top bloke with you most of the time? Well, the, the, I always got on well with him. My, my, it's not my name on the, on the board. It's not yeah. me selling, it's not me selling the tickets. It's him selling the tickets. I was in a very lucky position. He could have, he could have chosen any singer in the world to come and join him, but he chose me and I'll be eternally grateful for that because it gave me a springboard to do the thing, not so much with Schenker, but, but with Ingvi and, 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 and Alcatraz and things, you know, it it's, it it gave me a, a, a worldwide audience, you know, and I've had a lot of work come from that worldwide audience and because of my collaboration with Richie and to some extent Ingvi as well. Um, and, and, and so I'll always be grateful to him for that. We never really had any run-ins. We used to go to blockbusters together and get when there was no football on. I used to go down to his house when we weren't doing anything. Go down to his house and 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 we'd sit and watch the Princess Bride or you know the appointment. I mean, just rubbish movies. The two years walking around going, what's this one at blockbusters? But we got on really well. And then one day, one day it just he just went and it was gone, man. And it was gone as quick as that. Uh, we played football the day before the last show uh, in Esbjerg in Denmark. We played the show. Nothing was wrong. And uh, then it all within an hour of us coming off stage, it was all sort of... And I, I, I went home and just phoned them up and just handed in my resignation. Said, oh, no. You know, unless I hear from you in 24 hours, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this anymore. And and that was it. That was that was it. And I've never spoken to him since, you know. But he's always he's always treated me fairly. I mean, I did contact him because because I was owed some. Uh, we had a publishing agreement for the songs that I'd written, and I provided his management with the evidence that I was due funds, and they wouldn't pay. So I just wrote to him directly and said, "Look, man, you know." And he went, "Okay, there you go." And the check was in the post. So I've always had a great I've always had a great respect for him for that reason. But, he, you know, he, he's, he's very good at bringing new people in and taking people, not necessarily off the streets, you know, but out of clothing shops or out of being a coach builder or whatever, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and then he, and then he sets you free to do what, what, you know, he sucks you in, bleeds you dry and then sets you free and you can go off and if you can find your wings, you can fly. Some do, some don't, you know, and, and, and that, and that's one of his, that's one of his great gifts to, to the world of rock and roll is the amount of people who he has given careers to that you would maybe never have heard of. Yeah. And and we've all got to be very grateful for that. I mean, David Coverdale could still be selling suits in red car. You know, Ronnie Dio could still be trying to get off to do something. You know, Graham Bonnet could still be crooning away in Australia. But, you know, I could still be sit, sleeping on somebody's uh, floor in, in, in London but he gave us he gave us all this opportunity to go out there and, and, and make something of ourselves. And if you grasped it, you grasped it. And if you didn't, you didn't. Yeah, absolutely. And a couple of kind of generic questions then. Um, if you look back at your career, is there any one standout moment that you look back and go, was that me? Is that me? Was that the, can't believe that actually happened kind of thing? Well, I think it's, I, I think it was when, uh, when Richie sort of said you're in. I mean, that was, that was, and it happened, I don't know if he actually did, but he asked me what kind of album I would like to make, and I said a cross between Burn and Rainbow Rising, and I could just see his eyes lighting up, you know, mm. uh, and, and, and that's what we did. And, you know, that I, it's like, I suppose it's like your first girlfriend. 
you know, and then and then you marry somebody who wasn't your first girlfriend. Does that does that under there's just that underlying vibe and feeling that you that you get. And Richie played in two of my favorite bands of all time and, and did some of the greatest music and a lot and I learned a lot of my chops from those albums. And you know, so to be to be chosen and to you know, one of only seven guys that have written with them and recorded with them. Um you know, more men have walked in the moon. You know, I, I mean, I, I, and it, so, so I was very, I was very pleased, and I was very pleased not to be asked back. 